But yeah, I think if you follow this channel for a while, you've seen me do quite a fair bit of desert riding. But I've never been this far into the desert. This remote it is really out there. Good morning internet, it is 10 to 8 in the morning and welcome back to the channel, welcome here in Esmara. It is still dark outside but I think by the time I have my bike ready and I'm ready to go it hopefully it's gonna be kind of like first light. So I just want to get ready for first light because today is going to be a very long ride. Today I'm riding 480 kilometers through the desert. So I think it, it's all going to be off-road, it's all going to be on, on dirt tracks. 480 kilometers, so it's a really long way. Uh, I hope I'm gonna make it today. So as I said in the previous video, the area where I am now, it's all a little bit sensitive politically. So whatever I say about it, it's gonna be wrong and I'm gonna be attacked for it. It is absolutely not my intention to say anything political, but I just wanna give you a little bit of background because I can't really ignore one important thing in the area where I am. Right, so so if you're unfamiliar with the area, I'll try and give you a little bit of sense of what's going on. So I'm now right over here. Morocco is controlling the area, but that is disputed. That led to the construction of the berm. And the berm runs, I'm not gonna point it exactly, but it runs roughly around here. And it consists of sand and stone walls about three meters high with bunkers, fences, and landmines throughout. So the mine belt that runs through this structure is considered the longest minefield in the world. But there apparently the, the landmines are not only within the berm, but also in the area around it. So that means where I'm riding today, I must stay on the tracks, right? So I must follow the tracks. Locals use this route as well. There should be tracks everywhere. All I have to do is stay on the tracks. That's just the rule in this area. You do not veer off the tracks because there's a serious risk of landmines. As long as you stay on the tracks, all should be fine. So the total length of the route from here to Dakla is about 600 kilometers, but there is one point in between after 480 kilometers where there's a fuel station and I should hopefully be able to spend the night. Now I am bringing fuel. I'm guessing actually that with the amount of fuel I'm bringing, I should be able to make the whole 600 kilometers because I don't know about the reliability of that petrol station, so there might be not be any fuel at all. So in that case, it would be good if I can just make it all the way to Dakla. Um, but yeah, let's see. Uh, my goal for today is just to make it to that petrol station so I can stay the night because I don't think I'll manage 600 kilometers of off-road through the desert in one day. That's really, it's a lot. Of course, it fully depends on the tracks. Are there going to be fast tracks? Are, are they going to be super rocky or sandy? That, that all makes a difference. That of course also makes a huge difference for my fuel economy. If it's deep sand, then of course I'm using a lot more fuel. If it's super smooth, I'm using less. And yeah, and of course the speed that I'm riding makes a difference. So yeah, there are a lot of factors. In any case, I figured I must prepare myself properly because I am heading deep, deep into the desert where there is absolutely nothing. So, well, fuel I got sorted. And then there's one other thing that I brought with me. And that's this uh, water bag, which is kind of nice because yeah, if I don't use it, it's almost flat, the same with that uh, fuel bag, but it actually fits 10 liters of water. So yesterday I went shopping and I got myself 10 liters of water. And then I also brought a lot of food with me. So I think I'll be fine. Alaska is going to be super heavy with all the fuel, the water, it's going to be top loaded, but of course, as soon as I start riding, at least the fuel I'm going to be bringing away and uh, probably also a lot of water. So let's go. And then of course, I also have my uh, normal cabin bag with water. So that's another, what is that? Three and a half liters, I think. So water wise, I think it should be absolutely fine.
All right, my navigation says 606 kilometers, but that's um, all the way until Dakla. Uh, I plotted this uh, one route, so I should be able to make a stop after <laughs> 480k. Okay, <laughs> I am ready, Alaska. Oh, she's heavily, heavily loaded, but you know, after the first 150k, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna empty that fuel back on top so I'm not so top heavy so yeah the further I go the lighter she'll get Whew! first time I'm riding without my uh, top jacket it's a little bit chilly now in the morning of course but it will get warm soon enough I think So it's 8.30, let's see how long it will take me. You know, actually when I arrived here, if you've seen the previous video with all that rain <laughs> and flooding, suddenly I thought, what if it's rained here? Because then the tracks might be washed away and I can't see existing tracks. But I asked uh, one of the military guys at one of the posts and he said, uh, Assalamu alaikum. Passport? Yeah. Yesterday? Did you enter yesterday? Yes. Uh, what time? Um, uh, five o'clock. From, th from this? Uh, no, yesterday I came from Tata. Shukran. Salama. <laughs> All right, what was I saying? It didn't rain here. I actually put my <laughs> jacket back on because it was still a little bit chilly in the morning. I can definitely see tire tracks but yeah I have to keep a really good eye on my navigation so I make sure that I don't stray off the main track for too far wow there's absolutely nothing here hey eh? <laughs> it is just get a flat gravel desert Some trees. See, every now that, every now and then, oh, the track is a little sandy, but mostly it's very rocky. So I'm keeping my tire pressure up. lower the risk of a puncture on the rocks see and then you have some trees and then pop flat flat nothingness <laughs> nice sand riding with this top heavy bike with full tire pressure <laughs> but Actually managing fine. This must be where they recorded Mad Max, right? This desert really feels like the movie scene of Mad Max. I mean, it's just nothing. Every now and then, those look a little bit like salt flats, maybe. The white color, I'm not sure. All right, it's been 150 k's. 
I'm just gonna have a stop here and uh, transfer my fuel. What a place. So I got actually, it's very similar back to the ones that I had in South Africa. I remember when I was on my 250L, but then I had two three liter ones and now I have one six liter one, which is a lot more convenient, of course. There's only one bag. Uh, I don't really like uh, traveling with separate fuel bags at all but I only do it out of necessity. The same in South Africa at the time, I couldn't get a bigger tank for my bike. And now, of course, I have this extra tank, which is great. Um, I'm really happy I got that. But I knew there was going to be areas here and also in Mauritania, where even with my extra tank, uh, it still wouldn't be enough. So then I thought, okay, maybe I should go for this method again because at least if I don't use it it's flat it barely takes any weight uh, how do I get this loose it's a good question so that was my reasoning how do I do this now How does this work? It's a slightly different method than what I had in South Africa. Okay. So my rear tank will now be almost empty because it automatically it always uses this fuel first. So the it drains the rear tank first and then the main tank. It's just always a bit messy with these fuel bags. That's why I'm not really a fan, but they are super handy for moments like these. When you just need a bit more range. Time for a break. I'm almost halfway. Food supplies. I brought half a kilogram of dates, <laughs> which are great because dates 
have a lot of calories so they're really good snack and then I brought what else three breads Moroccan breads and boiled eggs which are slightly smashed and also this one mauya mauya kind of duo panotti <laughs> so i thought this is gonna be good to bring so in the shop where i bought all of this the shop owner was asking me are you un and i was like am i un no but later i realized because of the berm and all the landmines, I do know that since 2008, about 8,000 landmines mines east of the berm, so on the other side, have been uh, removed and destroyed, and 25,000 pieces of uh, sub ammunition, or sub ammunition, I don't even know what that is, but so they are removing it to obviously increase uh, people's safety. Um, so I wonder now, it, I wouldn't be surprised if the UN is leading those uh, demining campaigns. Um, but yeah. But yeah, I think if you follow this channel for a while, you've seen me do quite a fair bit of desert riding, but I've never been this far into the desert, this remote, and without anything you know like in a lot of places you still there's still some people living or i know for example in that uh, area around mesuga you know there are actually a lot of people living but also other deserts you know that I, I don't know how else to say it but this feels this feels really remote and well it is it is really out there Temperatures are <laughs> rising quickly now. I've got about 250 k's to go. I, I really think I found the only tree in like a hundred kilometer radius. It has to be. It always fascinates me how this one tree can survive. It's finally seemed to have become like a full sandy track. I'm so happy with that because it's a lot smoother. All the rocky stuff, oh, it was really bumpy. But this is super nice. Sometimes it's just quite hard to focus on the track because, I don't know, because of the colors of the sand, it all blends together. And everything becomes a little bit hazy or something. If all the time you're just staring at, <laughs> at this track in front of you. Like 
Like honestly, I swear I see water in front of me, like an ocean, but that can't be true. Wow, this is really bizarre. What is that? It is water. Why not? at the trees the whole time but that's basically the only thing I am seeing <laughs> it's just super super flat desert and then every now and then some patches of trees I'm not seeing anything else to comment on where do I go it's a good question straight it's very soft here Take another small break and refill my water pack from my backpack. There's all these little piles on the side of the road. I can already see the next ones. And I'm thinking that these are actually the track markers. That you're supposed to stay within these little piles. Otherwise I would not know why they are here. Oh well, that didn't last long. <laughs> My new chain guard is already gone. It's unbelievable, right? <laughs> okay, that will be enough for now. It's only a hundred N. Let me see. 140k to go. Oof. Starting to feel it a little bit. Let's go. It is now story three o'clock. Three o'clock already. Wow. Time goes fast. That's yeah, definitely another two hours. If it's uh, 140k, it's at least two hours. I don't think I'll average 70. Maybe just about. Susanne. Okay, I'm first gonna immediately fill up on fuel and then look because there's supposed to be a guest house somewhere in town. Let's first fill up.
Complete, complete. 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 Uh, no, no, no sleeping. No. Okay, so okay. Amr, amr. Okay. Uh. Okay. 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 Is awful. <laughs> full. There is no place. Yes, it's full. Ah. All right. Well, I have to keep going then. It's another 136 to Takla. But it's paved, so that will be fast. I thought this was going to be unpaved too, but I think it's all the way paved, so I'll just push on then, even though I'm pretty tired. It's quarter past five now, but uh, yeah, I can't stay here, so I'm just going to continue. Hey, buddies. Don't be afraid. It's okay. It's all right, I'm not gonna hurt you. Oh, that one looks pregnant actually. You look like you're carrying a baby. They're just <laughs> silly animals, hey. <laughs> they run so silly. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of cute. It's really adorable. <laughs> okay, I found a hotel, I'm now in Dhaka. It is 20 to 8 now. <laughs> I'm finished, I'm finished, I'm so tired. So I'm gonna end this video now. Um, in the next video I'm gonna do a little ride around Dakar, Dakla. Yeah. I'll do a real little, little ride and show you. Um, but for now this is <laughs> 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 Euh, comment on dit en français tu es en anglais tu es seul du Hollande seul seul sur la route c'est ça c'est ça non 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 non